Elections must and will be held this year, Jagde declares after meeting with President. Goal declarations declined by 6% in 2018. PVP presidential hopefuls to be grilled by party's central committee tomorrow and Friday. And in sport, Cricket West Indies urged to rescind unilateral appointment of interim head coach. These and more right now on this or Wednesday, January 9, 2019 edition of News Update. Good evening, I'm Sandy Ramultar. Thanks for joining us. Following the meeting with President Granger and cabinet members, opposition leader Bharat Jagdu declared that national and regional elections will be held this year. Opposition leader Bharat Jagdu today led a team from the People's Progressive Party to the Ministry of the Presidency to meet with the President Granger and his team of ministers. This is the first meeting following the passage of the confidence motion which toppled the government. According to Jack Dioweni press conference later in the day, elections must and will be held as stipulated in Article 106, 6 and 7 of the Constitution following a successful no-confidence vote. Elections have to be held this year. The Constitution says that. Um, I believe that the, the President and the others would not have put on the agenda for this meeting, which is a meeting to discuss the consequences, as I indicated in my, to him, the consequences of the passage of the no confidence motion, they have put on the agenda. This is an agenda submitted by the president to us, operational readiness of GCOM. So I think they also share our views that elections have to be held. He noted that both the opposition and the government agree that GCOM has to become ready for snap elections. To this end, Jack Dio noted that the opposition's chief whip, Gil Teixeira, will meet with the government's chief whip, Amna Ali, and officials at GCOM to determine the commission's readiness to hold elections on time. Nomination day, which will be in the first couple of weeks of February, Jagdeo also stated that there was no discussion about appointing a temporary chairman of GCOM. Currently, the chairman, retired Justice James Patterson, is on sick leave, which was extended yesterday. Reporting for MTV News Update, Godfrey Brooms. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news after the break. Stay with us. At Optic Vision Care, we value the power of your sight. And with our team of eye care professionals, you'll be in good hands. Come experience our comprehensive eye examination using state-of-the-art technology and specialized diagnostic equipment at four convenient locations. In Mahaika, Grove, Giftland Mall, and East Street. At Optic, we care, you see. Call us today, 227-7744. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick fit for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So... Feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Did you know almost one third of deaths in Guyana are heart related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. 
your one-stop decor solution for gala dinners, weddings, birthdays, cocktail functions, backdrops, props, and more, check out exclusive decor design Ground Floor City Mall. We have a wide variety to suit your stylish seating and table decor, exclusive centerpieces, colorful marrow, and much more. Working with a small budget? No problem. We've got you covered. Call 225-4434 or 657-0166. We listen, we create, you enjoy. Hey, you have a growing flesh there? And there too, and there is another one. Those ugly and annoying growing flesh, like a plague. Ignoring them, and before you know, you have them everywhere. SlimJet presenting Coliomac, the most effective growing flesh and wall remover. Painlessly remove ugly growing flesh is the quick and effective way. Get soft, smooth, growing flesh free skin, guarantee. Just apply Coliomac twice a day and the growing flesh just dry up and fall off. Easy, quick and painless. Stop suffering and feeling embarrassed. Remove those ugly growing flesh with Coliomac. Only at the Slim Jet City Mall second floor. President David Granger today assured citizens that the coalition led government has no intention of derailing the constitution but will move ahead with its legal recourse. Here are the details. President David Granger today met with opposition leader Bharat Jagdeo to discuss the way forward following the passage of the confidence motion on December 21, 2018. The two sides have agreed to continue its work with the Ghana Elections Commission to ensure elections are held with the administrative capabilities of the commission. He cleared up that the government has no intention of derailing the constitution. As you know, the government has had legal recourse to the courts in order to determine the validity of the vote in the National Assembly on the 21st of December. This is quite legitimate and there is no intention on the part of the government to derail the constitutional or legislative process. The head of state assured the public that both sides are working to affect the solution that will be reflective of the public's interest. The government will be seeking legal recourse to challenge the validity of the vote on a confidence motion by expelled parliamentarian Charandas Persaud. The one seat majority saw the government toppled but has since refused to resign in accordance with the constitution. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. The government has refused to drop its legal challenge to the December 21, 2018 no confidence vote, but has agreed with the opposition to have the matter expedited. Here is Godfrey Brooms. The government is convinced that the confidence motion was not properly passed by a majority of all the elected members of the National Assembly. That motion was passed when 33 of the 65 elected members voted in favor of the motion. Following the meeting with the government today, opposition leader Barrett Jagdeo told the media operatives that the government refused to retract the cases filed and has affirmed that they will be pursuing them. The president said no, they will continue to pursue the, the legal route as a remedy to this situation. While the opposition disagrees with the initial decision to take the matters to court, they agree with the government that the matters need to be expedited. We agreed on that some approach could be made to the court jointly or through a public statement to have this matter expeditiously determined. Since the government has insisted that it is going to pursue this remedy, it will not withdraw. Jagdeo stated that both the government and the opposition will be calling on the Chief Justice to have the matters be heard continuously instead of a lengthy adjournment. The government is challenging the legality of the past motion, saying 34 votes were needed for it to be properly passed. The government, through the Attorney General Basil Williams, is asking the court to nullify the motion and have the President and the Cabinet remain in place. Williams also filed for the government to remain put until the determination of the legality challenge. Reporting for MTV News Update, Godfrey Brooms. 
Authority at law, political commentator and chartered accountant Christopher Ram has filed legal proceedings in the High Court to validate the recently passed no confidence motion and have government comply with constitutional provisions to demit office and call elections no later than March of this year. The government filed several of cases in the High Court to challenge the validity of the past motion. But Ram is asking the High Court to declare that the President and the Cabinet resign in keeping with Article 1066 of Guyana's Constitution. With the Attorney General Basil Williams and Opposition Leader Dr. Barrett Jagdew as a named respondents, Ram wants the December 21, 2018 no confidence motion declared by the court as validly and lawfully passed, adding that government should resign with conveniently speed. The case for outlines that government should remain in office after the president takes the oath of office in 90 days or an extended period is agreed by two-thirds of the National Assembly as the 1067 requires. Ram's legal argument makes it clear that elections must be held no later than March 21 and is for the seeking the court to declare that these proceedings be dealt with urgently. His grounds of appeal seeking relief under the Constitution state that government was defeated with 33 votes against 32, 18 days have passed and government have given no indication to resign and that cabinet's failure to resign could lead to uncertainty and constitutional crisis. Ram filed his writ this afternoon through attorney Kamal Ramkran, who heads the Ghana Bar Association, a body which has already supported the validity of the no-confidence motion. We tell you now that the extension of medical leave for the chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission has become a cause for concern by the People's Progressive Party commissioners. The commissioners are concerned as it could be a ploy to delay the holding of general and regional elections. Here are the details. A planned meeting of the Ghana Elections Commission was yesterday called off after the chairman of the commission, retired Justice James Patterson, was advised by his doctors to afford extend his medical leave to an unannounced date. It is the second of two meetings cancelled since November. The chairman's illness has become a cause for concern for the opposition People's Progressive Party commissioners. The commissioners, B.B. Shadik, says Gunraj and Rupson Ben, are concerned whether his illness will impact the functions of the electoral body. In a joint statement, the commissioners said the extension of illness is a ploy designed to delay the holding of general and regional elections. With the passage of the confidence motion, snap elections must be held by March 21, 2019. It is in this context the commissioners urge GCOM to be alert in its duty and responsibilities as mandated by the constitution. With this in mind, the commissioners called on civil society and the international community to be vigilant with the unfolding situation at the commission. More importantly, the constitution provides for the appointment of a temporary chairman for the duration of absence or illness. Article 1617 states, if by reason of his illness, absence from Guyana or suspension under Article 225, the chairman or any other member of the Elections Commission is unable to perform his functions as such, a temporary chairman or member, as the case may be, may be appointed in his place. But the temporary appointment will have to be determined by the president who is responsible for the appointment of the chairman. Notwithstanding the situation at hand, the commissioners wish the chairman a speedy recovery. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's news update. A fire of unknown origin has destroyed the home of 33-year-old Sharon Van Coot, a reserve of the Ghana Defence Force who resides in West Waterco, Wismar, Linden. The fire reportedly occurred sometime between Saturday, January 5 and Monday 7, 2019. According to police, Van Coot was living in a one-story wooden structure with one entrance and exit door facing north. The said structure reportedly has no running water or electricity. At the time of the fire, the owner was in Georgetown. Investigations are currently ongoing. You're watching MTV's News Update. When we return, PVP presidential hopefuls to be grilled by party's central committee tomorrow on Friday and gold decorations declined by 6% in 2018. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. Make an impression with the finest styles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various styles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors, 
and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towels. Lens. Our product, your creation. Introducing the new Softex Toilet Tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice is clear. Two Softex Toilet Tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Looking for fresh, tender, and flavorful meat? Then check out Rosignol Butchery for steaks, burgers, sausages, minced meat, fish, and chicken. For a tasty, attractive cocktail, we have a wide variety of packaged deli meats and cheeses to decorate your platter. We also stock a wide assortment of canned goods, seasoning salt, sauces, and marinade, all in a highly hygienic, welcoming atmosphere with warm and welcoming staff to cater to all your needs. Rosignol Butchery, we meet your needs. Degrees of 74 Church Street, Georgetown. Telephone number 223 For the best in truck spares, Daff and Cummings, it's A1 Auto Value New Road Freedom Hoop on the west side. Check them out today for seals, alternators, filters, air valves, pistons and rings, air dryers, shocks, bearings, and a whole lot more. Parts and accessories for cars and minibuses. Call today on 254 0890. 64 New Road Freedom Hoop on the west coast of Demerara. A1 Auto Value. Performance without compromise. Welcome back, you're watching MTV's News Update. The presidential candidate hopefuls for the People's Progressive Party will tomorrow and Friday make their pitches to the party's 35-member Central Committee on why they should lead the party into the next general and regional elections. Here is more. As the general election is constitutionally due by March 20, 2019, General Secretary of the People's Progressive Party, Baraj Agdiu, stated that the party will soon select a presidential candidate. Currently, there are five persons, two of whom are women, vying for the spot. Gil Teixeira, Dr. Vindya Prasad, Dr. Frank Anthony, Anil Nandlal and Irfan Ali will be looking to better each other as they gear up to present their vision for the country tomorrow. For our presidential candidate um, from tomorrow, um, we'll have presentations from the five. Um, we will move swiftly. We have already been start. Start. We have already started to work on candidates for the regional level at the regional level for the geographic list and also for the national top up list. Those presentations will be done in front of the PPP's 35 Central Committee members, which will be followed by a vote by way of secret ballot at a date to be named. Opposition leader Barjag Dio noted that a selected candidate will be endorsed by the party, squashing any brewing assumption of infighting. Charles Ramson Jr., who wanted to vie for the top spot, had his hopes shattered when it was revealed that only members of the Central Committee can run for the presidential candidate post. The election of the PPP's presidential candidate was supposed to be done before the end of 2018, but due to the debacle and the confidence motion, that timeline was not met. The last presidential candidate of the PPP was former President Donald Ramatar, who was unsuccessful in his presidential bid, losing to the David Granger-led coalition government in 2015. Reporting from TV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. The Ghana Gold Board has recorded a 6.2% drop in gold declarations in 2018, which came as a result of prevailing conditions. 
The Ghana Gold Board has recorded a decrease of 6.2% in total declaration from all sources for 2018. Total declarations from all sources amounted to 613,073 ounces. A gold declaration of 713,000 was recorded in 2017. The Gold Board in a statement cited inclement weather on navigable roads and depressed metal prices among the factors responsible for the marginal difference. Licensed dealers Mohammed's Enterprise and Eldorado Trading finished first and second respectively in total declarations and exports of gold. The foreign exchange value of exports processed on behalf of dealers came to U.S. 443,961,666,000. On a positive note, the gold board is expecting a projection of 651,000 ounces of gold for 2019. Work will continue on the managing and enhancing of existing emissions control mechanisms and the search for a permanent home base. Police in the Linden Kwakwani area yesterday conducted a narcotics eradication exercise at 10 miles of Millie's hideout of Demarara, during which several fields of cannabis cultivation were destroyed. The exercise, which was conducted between 7 and 6 hours, was a joint effort between police community policing groups and rural constables. During the exercise, the ranks discovered several fields totaling 9 acres with an estimated 9,000 cannabis plants. The plants range from 2 feet to 8 feet in height. They also discovered 300 kilos of dried ganja and two nurseries containing 6 to 500 seedlings. Seven camps containing groceries, kitchen utensils, clothing, beds, hammocks and foodstuff were also found. The fields were reportedly destroyed by fire. Divisional Commander Lyndon Lord said no one was arrested as investigations continue. Director of the Government Analyst Food and Drug Department, Marlon Cole, says the department is currently conducting tests on an imported food product which is expected to have above the recommended level of additives for human consumption. Here's the Shana Gomes, Cornelius. Cole indicated while the department is currently focusing on the testing of imported products, it has also done similar exercises on locally produced items. Cole stressed that the safety and well-being of all consumers of both local and imported products is of a priority concern to the Food and Drug Department. Well, we have in, in um, currently in our laboratory, we're doing a number of tests for um, levels of preservative on a particular product. And based on our findings, then we'd have to take the necessary action as it relates to the importation of that particular product. So you will be hearing from the Food and Drug Department shortly relative to that in terms of we are concentrating now on food additives because there are percentage that should be used in food and some persons to um, supply items with preservatives that is above the recommended limit. Shedding some light as to where the department is as regard the recently recalled Del Monte Fiesta corn, Cole indicated that over 90% of the products supplied to Guyana have been confiscated by the Food and Drug Department and will be destroyed. Yeah, what has happened recently, we had communication from the supplier of the arrival of the remaining items that are to be notified to the department and the destruction exercise and that is to be had on, fr on this Friday where all of the affected items is, is now in the warehouse and so that would be destroyed. I think a few cases was not accounted for of the 600 and odd cases that was Im officially imported by the importer. Mm -hmm. So that should come to a close this Friday where the majority, maybe 95% of the affected product would have been destroyed by the food and drug in the, in, under the supervision of the food and drug department. It was only recently Del Monte announced the recall of a specific batch of its fiesta corn from 25 U.S. states, Guyana and other parts of the Caribbean and South America due to contamination. Approximately 65,000 cases of the particular canned corn were recalled from the U.S. company, which cited the reason as being the corn did not go through the entire sterilization process and could cause life-threatening illness if eaten. The Ghana Office for Investment has won an award for excellence in public service from the Georgian Chamber of Commerce and Industry for effectively facilitating the work of the business community by providing the highest standard of service. 
GCCI President Dieta Tenda presented the award to Goinvest Chief Executive Officer Owen Verwey at a small ceremony at the Chamber's boardroom on Monday. Ender said only the young leadership of Coinvest has been more onward looking. He said GCCI appreciates Coinvest's informative presentation on Guyana's trade agreements with various countries and the agency's precise explanations of the benefits of such agreements. He noted that the two entities had worked well together to facilitate mutually beneficial partnerships between international and local businesses. We now join Celine Griffith with your court round up. A father of one was today slapped with six charges as he appeared at the Georgetown Magistrates Court. 22-year-old Wayne Anthony Chester of Law 1226 Diamond Housing Scheme was not required to plead to the first charge which was deemed indictable alleging that he murdered Purcell Moore during the course of a robbery on December 20, 2017 at Craig Village, East Bank de Marara. The following two charges were that of robbery under arms and damage to property. It is alleged on January 6 at Lot 1 Conciliation Drive, Tugville, while in the company of another and armed with a gun, he robbed Quentin Cromwell of jewelry and cash reaching the total value of $512,600. He was also charged for causing damages to the property of Quentin Cromwell, which amounted to the value of $85,000. The final three charges were for discharging a loaded firearm towards Cromwell with intent to maim, disfigure, disable, or cause him grievous bodily harm, as well as having said firearm a .32 pistol and matching ammunition in his possession while not being the holder of a firearm license. When given a chance to speak, Chester requested medical attention after claiming he was badly beaten by officers of the East Penitence Police Station. This request was granted after the magistrate took record of the visible marks of violence about the head, hands, and back of the man. He is scheduled to return to court on January 25 for the murder charge and on January 30 for the other five charges. Meanwhile, a man was today remanded to prison after he appeared before Magistrate Sherdell Isaacs Marcus for the capital offense of murder. 27-year-old Addison Benjamin of Lima, Esequibo Coast, was not required to plead to the indictable charge which alleged on January 1 at Kurotuku Village, Kayuni River, he murdered Solomon Lewis. According to reports on the day in question, the accused and the deceased, who was the Tushawa of the village, were involved in a heated argument over the accused allegedly assaulting the daughter of the now-dead man, when the defendant armed himself with a cutlass and dealt a chop to Lewis's neck, which led to severe injuries, to which the man later succumbed. The defendant reportedly then fled the scene, and it was due to diligent efforts by the police that led to his arrest. However, However, according to the man's attorney, he was attacked by Lewis and his son and was merely defending himself when the man became injured. Police prosecutor Gordon Mansfield told the court that additional charges will be brought against Benjamin for the alleged attempt murder of Lewis's son, who suffered a severed hand during the incident. He was remanded to prison until January 28. Finally, a Cuban national was today placed before Magistrate Faith Magasti for conspiracy to commit a felony. Girly Ruiz Beliz, 33, of Cuba pleaded not guilty to the two charges against him. The first charge read that on January 4, at Central Immigration and Passport Office, George Chong, with intent to defraud, he presented one Republic of Cuba passport number J684961 with the Fort Guyana Immigration CJIA Immigration Departure stamp dated 2018-04-23 and one arrival stamp dated 2018-10-24, both inserted on page 4 of his passport, knowing same to be false. The second charge stated that on October 24, at Georgetown with intent to defraud, he conspired with person or persons unknown to forge one Guyana Immigration CJIA Immigration Departure stamp dated 2018-04-23 and one arrival stamp dated 2018-10-24, both inserted on page 4 of his passport purporting to show that both were issued by Central Immigration Passport Office, knowing seemed to be false. The prosecution objected to bail being granted to the defendant since no fixed local address was produced to the court. When asked where he resides in Guyana, the man who communicated through a translator claimed he stayed with his girlfriend, but did not want to get her in any trouble and refused to give up the address. As such, he was remanded to prison until January 30. Reporting for MTV's Court Roundup, Celine Griffith. Coming up after the break, MTV's Sports Update and more. Stay with us. When reliability is not an option, you need a supplier you can trust. This skilled technician depends on Farfan and Mendes for heavy-duty tools. This landscaper earns a living using still equipment. High rates of production and recovery lead to this or Miller trusting his operation to Wood Miser. Mothers trust the water filtration systems for the health of their families. Thanks to the automatic backup systems, you'll never be left in the dark again. Farfan and Mendes, offering you solutions you can depend on. 
Are you invited to that important event but don't know what to wear or frustrated you're wearing the same dress as everyone else? You crave for this exclusive look? Then do just that with dresses from Exclusive Dresses to Impress. Visit Exclusive Dresses to Impress at Giveland Mall. Contact number 6570166. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens. Available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Beeson Windows and Doors, fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property, or just upgrading your home, they got you covered. Beeson Windows and Doors, providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 622-6943. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc., Guyana's sole distributor of NP and Ultra Lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sales service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG, the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome to MTV's Sports. Cricket West Indies has been asked to rescind the appointment of Richard Fabus as national coach with the Leeward Islands Cricket Board saying he was handpicked by Dave Cameron, the CWI president, through an unacceptable process. The Leeward Islands Cricket Board, in an email signed by directors Enoch Lewis and Denrick Lilbert, said it is unfortunate, unacceptable and unethical for the CWI president to single-handedly recruit a person of his choosing and to proceed with salary negotiations without the prior knowledge of the board. The LICB asked for a response from CWI by the end of yesterday, but that deadline was not met and according to ESPN, Chris Info understands a response will be sent next week. Fabus was announced as interim head coach of West Indies last week. His tenure is set to start with the home series against England from January 23 and then soon after the home series against India in September 2019. Fabus takes over from Stuart Law, who opted out of his contract prematurely last year. According to the LICB, one of the many members that make up CWI, Cameron announced Law's resignation at a board meeting on September 22 and said he would leave by the end of 2018. Jimmy Adams, the director of cricket, was then asked to present a list of potential candidates from within the carbon who could perform the role of interim head coach while a process to appoint a long-term coach was put in place. The LICB said Adams submitted 11 names including Nick Pothas, who was appointed standing coach for the Bangladesh Tour in November 2018. The others were Rodi Estwick, Floyd Refer, Gus Logie, Desmond Haynes, Toby Radford, Andrew Coley, Usain Crandon, Stuart Williams, Rayon Griffith and Robert Samuels. 
Adams shirtless Pothus, based on recommendations from Law and Jason Holder, West Indies Test and ODI captain, who wanted continuity and stability in the coaching staff and the CWI board agreed to his recommendation while he sought to hire a long-term coach. According to the LICB, Adams also recommended that Pothus work alongside Law and Bangladesh to get acquainted with the increased workflow. Cameron, however, told CWI directors that he got in touch with Fabus and concluded a deal including a salary of U.S. $16,000 plus other unspecified benefits to become the next interim head coach. The LICB cited grave concerns that Cameron went to Fabus without seeking inputs from Adams, the Cricket Committee, the Technical Cricket Committee or the CWI board. It also pointed out that the salary given to Fabus was significantly higher than Portus. At a quarterly CWI board meeting, when Faber's appointed came up for ratification, the LICB directors objected strongly. They said Faber's had not formally expressed an interest, had limited experience considering he hadn't coached an international team in five years, and had not been part of Adams' shortlist of candidates. While noting that Cameron's decision received majority support from the 17 CWI board directors, the LICB called the issue divisive. As a way forward, the LICB suggested negotiating a new compensation package with Pothus, who it said should continue as the interim head coach until September 2019. Cricket West Indies has hailed the improvement of fitness levels of the West Indies men over the last year and introduced a new benchmark for testing of players' stamina and endurance. Let's take a look. Cricket West Indies says all teams under its care, including the six territorial franchises, which were evaluated using a battery of tests, with the yo-yo endurance test being a key metric, the Windies men showed the greatest improvement during the last year. This was revealed by CWI Head of Sports Medicine and Science, Dr. Oba Gulston, during the regional governing body's last board of directors meeting, held on December 8 and 9 in Trinidad. The yo-yo endurance test is a part of a series of fitness testing method developed in Denmark by football physiologist Dr. Jens Bangsbo. It is a key measure used to evaluate a player's stamina and endurance. The benefits of the test include helping players to recover faster during the matches by increasing their aerobic capacity. CWI Chief Executive Officer Johnny Graves said players' fitness at elite international level is a key ingredient of successful teams. He added that to attain and improve fitness standards, the CWI board has now set a benchmark that is tied to eligibility for selection using the Yo-Yo Endurance Test. Graves said the new fitness benchmark is a part of a suite of measures that the CWI board has approved to help improve player performance across the board. Graves said the West Indies used to set the benchmark for fitness in cricket and it was one of the hallmarks of great Windies teams of the 1980s and the 1990s. International teams have taken our lead and set new standards and Graves believes investing in all players of fitness will give regional cricket the best chance of success. Reporting for MTV's Sport Update, Quatfrey Brooms. The International Cricket Council has announced an unprecedented 50-day amnesty as part of its investigation into corruption in Sri Lanka. The amnesty, which will run from January 16 to 31, is the first of its kind to be held by cricket's world governing body. Failure to report an approached incident or information can result in a ban from cricket of up to five years for those who come forward during the ICC amnesty with information on corrupt conduct, which they had previously failed to report, will not be charged. Last year, former Sri Lankan international players Sanath Jai Surya, Nuan Zersa and Dilhara Lokahij were charged by the ICC's anti-corruption unit as part of a widening range of investigation. Guyana is one step closer for qualifying for the 2020 Olympics with Canadian-based number 21 ranked Wayne Diabru. Here is more. Archery Guyana in a statement today said that Guyana-born Diabru recently joined Archery Guyana. He is currently ranked as number 17 in the province of Ontario, Canada, and number 21 in Canada. According to the body, Diabru is well on his way to qualifying for 2020 Olympic representing the Golden Arrowhead. It's said that Diabru's achievement is remarkable considering that he entered the sport relatively late, whilst all the programs and resources were aimed and designed for a younger archer. Archery Guyana says it stands to benefit from Wayne's tremendous experience as they move forward in developing their program locally. Archie Guyana added that it is enthused at the prospect of Guyana qualifying in the near future for the 2020 Olympics and stands behind Wayne as he seeks to fulfill not only his personal dream, but Guyana's.
While number one Simona Halep's first match is more than three months ended in defeat by Australia's Ashley Barty at the Sydney International, the Romanian who cut short her 2018 season with a back injury was beaten 6-4, 6-4 by the world number 15 in the second round after a first round bye. French Open champion Halep 27, who was runner-up at last year's Australian Open, has started 2019 without a coach. The first Grand Slam of the year starts in Melbourne on Monday. Barty fired the 26 winners on her way to her first victory over a world number one. She will face a Belgian 10 C. Ellis Mertens in the next round. Despite the defeat, Halep was pleased that she had played a good level of tennis and was not troubled by her back. More news after the break. Stay with us. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sales service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG, the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome back, you're still with News Update. Now for some news in the region. Guatemala's Constitutional Court has suspended a decision by the government to kick out a UN body that was investigating the country's president. The International Commission Against Impunity in Guatemala has been running for more than a decade. On Monday, politicians informed the body it had 24 hours to leave. The commission was investigating President Jimmy Morales over alleged funding irregularities during his 2015 election campaign. He has accused it of acting illegally and undermining Guatemalan sovereignty. Last year, the president said he would not extend the body's mandate, which is due to expire in September 2019. But on Monday, his foreign minister Sandra Jovel announced that the decision had been brought forward. On the international scene, the rebel conservative MPs have joined forces with Labour to inflict a fresh blow on Theresa May's government in a Commons Brexit vote. It means the government will have to come up with revised plans within three days if Mr. May EU's withdrawal deal is rejected by MPs next week. It could also open a door to alternatives such as a referendum. Number 10 says Mr. May deal was in the national interest, but if MPs disagree, the government would respond quickly. The setback for the PM came as MPs started five days of debate on the withdrawal agreement with the EU and the framework for future relations ahead of the meaningful vote next Thursday. The government was expected to have 21 days to come up with a plan B for Brexit if it was widely expected, which has made the is voted down. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. Now let's take a look at the Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 807. Let's now draw our attention to the Demar Harbour Bridge and the Burbies River Bridge schedules. And that's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. General elections must and will be held this year, Jagdu declares after meeting with President. Goal declarations declined by 6% in 2018. PP presidential hopefuls to be grilled by parties central committee tomorrow on Friday. And in sport, Cricket West Indies urged to rescind unilateral appointment of interim head coach. Qatar rebroadcast at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.